Hey there everybody, Red X Parasite here, and welcome back to Let's Play Metroid Prime 3. In the last episode, we got the Boost Ball, and we purged the Aurora unit here on Skytown of the Phazon virus, just in time for uh, Gore to sever the communication cables, so uh, now we have to go and track Gore down so that we can get the plasma cannon and repair the, uh, the cables. So... Yeah. Trying to think, is this the way that we want to go? Um, I think I think we can go this way. So we'll give it a shot. And if I'm going the wrong way, then I'll find out. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, of course. That actually wasn't too bad. Okay. So, um, we don't have any idea where Gore is right now. So we're just gonna have to wait for that. Ship status alert. Unknown entity approaching. Commencing hull lockdown. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. So, we're gonna head to the right. I believe this is the Steambot Barracks. Find out in a moment. Yep. Okay, so the last time that we were here, we had a battle this time. Now that we have the boost ball, uh, we can activate this kinetic lock. This will actually be our first time seeing uh, a half pipe in this game. So they've been a common staple in the Prime Trilogy thus far. So yeah, they, these vertical locks can be a bit of a pain sometimes. They're more finicky than the horizontal ones. But, in any case, to uh, get up these half pipes, all you have to do is just boost with good timing. And you can actually get pretty high using that. So for now, um, I'm just going to activate this. Oops. Generally works better if you actually do it correctly. So actually, I don't need any ammo. Full on health, I'm full on missiles. So I'm in pretty good shape. So, uh, in the next room, actually, the room, no, it, yeah, it is the next, uh, next place over there, you know, um, there's an item that we can get, so we'll definitely want to get that. Now, one of the nice things that, about having the boost ball now is, um, we can activate some of these kinetic orb cannons. And these will allow us to take a few shortcuts uh, here and there on Skytown. So, for example, we can skip uh, two of these rail segments now. Or actually, just one. But still, better than better than having to do it. So we have more of these guys with their dragoon uh, drones. So I'm just going to kill them the uh, the fast way, if they would cooperate, that is. Of course, it's not in their best interest to cooperate, but it's in my best interest. But, um, so we already got, yeah, we got that. Um, you definitely, I don't know if I've gotten, oops, I don't know if I've gotten this yet. So let's see. Oh, there they are. I'm going to boost into these guys again. And fall off. That's what all the cool kids are doing these days. Falling off. And I wonder if you can only get that uh, friend credit in a certain place. It might be that. But, uh, if you come over here and activate the kinetic orb cannon, there's actually an energy tank over there on that platform, so definitely worth your while to uh, take this. It's not even really that much of a detour. 
Um, that you need to go this way anyways, so. Ship priority status alert. Hull armor taking damage. So, uh, we should get back to our ship quickly. Not a lot of time to waste, of course. If you know anything about video games, then you'll know that no matter how fast we get there, it's not going to change anything. But since that's also what we need to do to move the story forward, you know, we're just going to make our way over there quickly regardless. So this should be the last zip line, and then we'll be back at our ship. Now the one thing you do have to be careful about with those gates is if you shoot them too early, they actually don't stay open forever, so um, I have had times where I shot those too early and then they actually knocked me off because they closed on me while I was passing through them. Alright. Okay, so we just have more of these. Ship priority status alert. Warning. Hull integrity is compromised. Armor damage is critical. Now, I believe those messages are scripted based on when you get to certain areas. But, we are now back at our ship, and guess who it is? It's our favorite friend. Uh, okay, yeah, it's this way. I don't think we're going to be able to get to scan him before this cutscene activates. Just in time. We have a boss fight with Gore. That shield repels all weapon fire, powered by unit on his back. Gore's energy shield is capable of repelling all weapon fire, but the back mounted generator is exposed to attack. Overloading the generator could expose the well protected critical systems behind his battle armor. Gore's arsenal is considerable. Plasma based beam weapons, attack claws, and a multi missile system are at the cyborg's disposal in battle. These systems can be combined and fired at once as a devastating alpha strike. Target is also capable of a high-speed ramming attack, although this is potentially, potentially dangerous if performed over a slippery surface. So, with Gore, you won't be able to attack him normally because it's shield. Um, your goal, if you can see the, uh, the gender on his back, is to get behind him and shoot that. it be a little bit tricky. So, what you can use to uh, stun him is if you freeze those pools of fuel gel with uh, ice missiles, then oh, like not really attack anymore. Um, then he'll slide on them when he does that charging attack, and we'll give you an opening. So now the the pools will not stay frozen forever. And some of his attacks will actually break them like that. And the nice thing is that um, even if you get hit, there you'll still uh, you'll still be able to damage him. So once you get his shield down, I recommend using hyper mode. It just eats through his health pretty quickly. And once you get his health low enough, he's going to go into kind of a second phase here. Um, so instead of having the forward mounted shield. It's going to be vulnerable, um, basically, um, only some of the time. So in order to get it um, vulnerable, you need to attack that little thing beneath his legs. So that's all you have to do in the second phase of the fight. Sometimes it'll just be out, and then... Um, 
sometimes he'll have it um, out during an attack like uh, this one. So once you get his health down to about 25%, um, he'll go into hyper mode, and of course, the best way to combat that is to go into hyper mode yourself. Now, a lot of his attacks are gonna get, gonna get more damaging, more devastating. I think that's both. So some, one little thing that I just noticed is um, you don't actually pick up item. Oh, wow, I thought I had actually uh, taken him down. But you don't, you can't pick up items with the uh, charge beam while you're in hyper mode. Like it won't suck them towards you, which is interesting. Oh, hey, Dark Samus. Uh-oh. Samus clenched her fist. That's how you know she's serious. But, yeah... That, that fight is it's fun. Um, it's not too difficult if you just use hyper mode a lot like I did. Um, it can be a little bit more challenging um, actually on the hyper mode difficulty. But, for beating gore, we get the plasma beam. Now, this isn't as strong as it was in the first Prime game. Because it was a late game weapon. In that game... But it does have the advantage of being having a faster rate of fire in this game. So there's going to be a cutscene here where she calls her ship back. But I'll demonstrate the uh, the beam in a moment. Ship has definitely seen better days. So it's unable to fly in its current state, so we actually can't leave. Um, the only thing that we can do with it right now is save. So uh, I'll show you here. So we have a um, piece of metal. It's vulnerable to heat, so we can shoot this about as fast as you could shoot the regular power beam. So it's not, you know, each shot individually isn't as powerful, but you can still get a pretty good damage output with it. And unfortunately, uh, we're not going to be getting another beam upgrade for a while. Because this game actually does beams a little bit differently than the previous Prime games in that um, they just stack in this game, so we don't have to switch between beams. Our normal beam is just the plasma beam now. So, um, can't use the power beam. But... Not that I, not that I really have any complaints. Now, one thing that I did fail to show off is uh, in the previous Prime games, the charge beam. When you're charging it up, it was actually a sphere at the end of your gun. In Prime Three, it, uh, it isn't. Uh, for the normal, normal power beam, it's actually like a disc. But the plasma beam actually is a sphere. So, just you know, little details that. I played around with because I had nothing better to do. Played this game, you know, quite a few times. So now that we have the plasma beam, uh, we need to head back to uh, the Aurora unit and fix those cables. So that's where we're going to be headed next. And I just realized, uh, no, never mind. Um, so these are Elysian Shriek bats. We couldn't scan them the first time because they were in an inconvenient location. Uh, they're a mechanical variant of a Shriek Bat that will explode on contact. Like all Shriek Bats, the Elysian Shriek Bat will dive bomb any creature that wanders too close and detonate on contact. However, these are not actual creatures, but machines made to mimic their real-life counterparts. Designed centuries ago, their original purpose is unknown. They now roam the hovering facilities over Elysia, often in small flocks. So, like other Shriek Bats, it's generally a good idea to try to take them out before they dive bomb you. A bit easier to deal that way. So, 
There's nothing we can do but take this, uh, this again. But, you can see that these only go down in a single shot to the plasma beam now, so... We'll make these sections a little bit easier, if anything. I almost thought that I wasn't going to hit that. Okay. So, we can also use them against the... Uh, tin bots, and... You know, in their scan it said that they're weak to heat, so they're easily melted, so... We can actually... Just use, like, a few uncharged shots, and that'll just kill them pretty much instantly. Okay, so... If there, if there is one downside to um, the way that this whole section works out is that you have to go back to your ship, fight Gore, you know, get the plasma beam, and then basically retrace your steps back to the Aurora unit. Just one giant back and forth is what it is. It is a little something different this time, however. Uh, since we have the plasma beam now, um, there's a cannon off to the right here. Or left. I don't know why I got my confu directions confused there. Um, if you destroy these plates that are around it, you'll be able to use this. And that will effectively, uh, it's going to fire us directly over to uh, this platform right here. So we're going to skip going back through the Steambot barracks. Of course, this is only a one-way uh, deal. Okay. What else do I need to do to activate this? Let me see what the scan says. Oh, it's ready for use. I was waiting for something to activate and say like, oh, hey, it's ready, you know, ready to be used now. But yeah, this is only a one-way trip. It's not like the other uh, cannons where there's usually like a pair of them. So we can't can't use this one yet. We do not have the right upgrade. So we just saved. So I'll forego doing it here. And you can destroy these, but they don't really do anything, so not really worth our time. So for now, um, we're just going to head directly down to the uh, maintenance area. And this will actually be our first uh, time doing welding stuff. So this is a new mechanic in this game, of course only. Oops. So what you have to do is you have to start at one of the hot ends and trace along the wire to fix it. Now, there's, they start off pretty simple, but um, as you can imagine, they'll get a lot more complicated. And of course, you want to <laughs> you want to go through them as fast as possible, but then you also have to make sure that you don't go too far off the path, otherwise, and I'll demonstrate it here, um, you'll just lose all your progress. So everything's back online now. So I'm gonna head back up. And I think this will actually be a good place to end off this episode. So in the next episode, we'll talk to the Aurora unit here and figure out uh, how we're going to, oh, that was actually a scan that I can read, um, and figure out you know, how we're gonna get to the seed on Alicia. Before we go, however, um, since I got the scan, this is Aurora Unit 217, Organic Supercomputer in Charge of Maintaining Sky, Count, Sky Town. Aurora Unit 217 was originally built to support GF Naval Base Demeter, but was assigned to Sky Town Base shortly after the Treaty of Elysia was signed 14 years ago. 217 has served admirably in its role as Sky Town Administrator. Vast amounts of tactical intel have been delivered from Sky Town under AU 217 
along with valuable stellar and interstellar research data. It has interfaced well with the Elysian mechanoids and enjoys a productive working arrangement with them. So, uh, now that we've gotten that scan out of the way, uh, thank you very much for watching this episode of Let's Play Metroid Prime 3. I've been Red X Parasite, signing out.